Welcome to Mad Mad. Nice to be on your show. It's always nice to have the other cameras on the other angle switched. Anyway, it's nice to yeah, be here. Yeah, we're changing, this, we're changing yes, the tables Yes, it's nice to be around. on the other side of the table. Right. <laughs> so if I'm brand new to, to all of this material. I say forget it. <laughs> <laughs> what, where, do I, where do I jump in? I, I've, I've stumbled upon new realities. Okay. I open up a program. I see what's there. I'm kind of pulled in. I don't know what it is. It might seem mm. a little weird, mm. but yet I want to go further, but I'm in the, I'm in the deep water. No, that Where's is a, the thank baby you. pool. <laughs> thank you. No, that is a great question. That is a great question. First of all, I don't think I cater to the baby pool crowd. I mean, I think if you're already in, I mean, I should maybe. No, no diapers allowed. <laughs> <laughs> right. No baby pool. You have to know how to swim if you're going to jump in the water. No, because there's so many other people introducing people to Reiki and chakras, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I probably should do that, but I, if you want to go deeper into why, what's the purpose of incarnation, how can you access your, your soul's true essence, or uh, what are the ETs really saying? Or so, I mean, it's okay... To jump, I mean, I guess the first step I'm saying is you have to know that you're more than just your body. Mm. That's your entrance. Into, like, if you don't know that, do not tune into this website. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for you. This may, this may, this may shock you out of it's, your, it's a, your paradigm, your belief yeah. system. Don't, if, this, if your belief system does not include this, mm -hmm. it might self-destruct. Okay. No, but that is, a, no, that's a really good question. Mm. So where do you get started? I think, I think for everyone who's opening to a spiritual path, because people are. People are waking up every day and saying, well, I think there's something more. Mm -hmm. There's more here than my religion, my education, my government, my media. I know there's more to me than I've been told by all the levels of conditioned society. Mm -hmm. How do I find that? How do I find the true sense of my essence? And then, that's all you need to tune into new realities. It is, because it's just inquiring. It's just, I want to know if there's more. That's how I started. I'm sure that's how you started. Mm -hmm. I knew there was something more. I didn't know what that was, but then I did. I saw Rantha and like, boom. I, I think part of this new paradigm is developing a sensitivity to energy mm -hmm. and to vibration. And that's what we have to open up the new neuro logical software of our of our brains to start to tune ourselves to the sensitivity that we can feel. You're really specifically talking about the brain as opposed to the mind. Well, the brain, mind and consciousness. The mind is I define so you have the brain. The mind is what is um, made accessible. It's by the brain. The mind is how the personality uses the brain to think. Hmm, That's the mind, or what Bashar would call the physical mind. What, what also exists is consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I explain it like you have the hardware, you have the software. So you have the hardware of your computer, right? Sure. You have the software, the programs on your computer. That's the mind. Mm -hmm. But what's missing? You have hardware and software. What do you need to operate the computer? A user. Exactly. The user <laughs> is consciousness. The user is the spirit, let's say. The user is that aspect that is the observer that exists beyond the software and hardware, right? You exist beyond your software and hardware. You sure. just use that. So you're picking up the vehicle of the hardware and software. What? You're well, making a face. I, <laughs> I mean, I think mind is local and non-local. Consciousness is non-local. Right. Yeah, the mind. I mean, I was. I mean, we could define it any way we want. The I'm mind, just trying to understand. No, no. It's it, the mind can be seen as non-local. I I would call the mind more of a local thing, but okay. I can understand okay. how you say it. It's a non-local. I call the non-local mind consciousness. But maybe there's aspects to. It. We're making it all up. We're making mm -hmm. up these definitions because we're redefining a new paradigm that has yet to be expressed. It has yet to be. Um, cognized into this reality. Mm. We are now defining the next level of awareness mm -hmm. in terms that, have, that don't have definitions. Mm. So that's the difference between recognition and cognition. You know what I mean? You know what recognition yeah, is? Yeah, absolutely. What is it? 
recognition is seeing something and understanding it. Right. And cognition. Well, cognition is the understanding. Recogni recognition is the familiarization. Right. It's familiar to me. Right. So, but we, ha we are now just in the phase of cognizing new realities. Mm -hmm. So we can. Making them. No. Con making them conscious. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when they're conscious, they can be recognized mm -hmm. for a larger population. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's like the my job is to cognize these realities mm -hmm. so other people can recognize them and fit them into a bigger picture. Nice. You know, that's why like the paintings of Alex Gray is important because people are having these experiences mm -hmm. but they don't have a context to put it in. Right. You know, I'll give you a really simple example okay. of this. Did you ever go to like a, a wine taster, like a really yeah, fan? Absolutely. And you taste the wine and you say, oh, that tastes like wine, big deal. And then they say, did you taste the fruitiness? Did you taste like the dryness? The tobacco. And you, the and yeah. And then you say, wow, I did taste that, but I didn't recognize it until someone pointed it out. Excellent. It's that same thing. You don't recognize these levels of consciousness, these levels of awareness until someone points it out and someone says, you know what? There was a voice talking to you. There really, really was. Mm -hmm. You have to accept it. It was just at a frequency that you couldn't understand. But as you access these higher realms, you are going to understand it. You're going to recognize it for what it is. So all of us are moving to a new dimension that way. You know, some of this comes up in relationship to listening to the, the lectures of Bashar. Yeah. Lectures. I don't know if you call them that. Bashar is a channel. But Bashar, right. Um, and he talks a lot about what's going to be happening, how things are going to be unfolding over the next 10, 15, mm -hmm. 30 years. Mm -hmm. What, what do you see? Well, Bashar, first of all, says he's an extraterrestrial from the future who's a contact specialist. So he says he's here being channeled through this person, Daryl Anka, to help all of us raise our frequency. So I, I think a lot of people have been in fear about ETs, extraterrestrials, but there's nothing to fear. You know, we see movies like Independence Day and just ridiculous things that are here to put us in fear. Yeah. Could you just describe a little bit where you put your mind before you actually go in there? Uh, well, again, at this mm -hmm. point, all I really am doing is just relaxing in a way that just opens me up to whatever is going to connect. It's a, it's, uh, the best thing I can do is just describe it as a, a state of total trust. It's like you're putting yourself kind of in someone else's hands right. for a moment and just letting that energy take over the driver's seat. Yeah. Fear sells, but the truth of meeting a cosmic intelligence is not about fear. It's about transcending fear. It's meaning that we are equal in a way to those that are coming to visit us. So I see as people get familiar or used to the idea that, you know, we're not the lonely bastards of a lifeless universe, <laughs> <laughs> which means that we're this creation everywhere, you know, there's, you know, this is not the only planet that life exists on. Life is, er, life is abundant. Right. Well, it's rather egotistical of us to think that we are. It's like saying the earth is the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like that will seem just as ridiculous, I would say, in 50, 100 years. As, as saying, saying like the earth is flat or, or saying that it's the only place in the universe that has life. Well, is there life? So it's obvious to most people, most intelligent people. First of all, that water is abundant in, throughout the planet. And water is the elixir of life. Of course, there's other substances that are probably able to make life. But you know what sunspots are? It's water collecting on the sun. That's what a sunspot is. Mm. So there's water. If we're using water as the basis of life, water is abundant throughout the universe. That's mm. what Emoto has said. That's what a lot of water scientists have said. So. If life is abundant throughout the universe, how come we're not meeting it? It's because we've been ruled by dogma and conditions and religion and, and all the things that have kept us very limited in our thinking. Mm. If we start to expand our mind, we make contact through our mind. That's where contact is being made. Well, people dismiss the things that they feel, you know, that are imagination, which is really the gateway right. for all of these magical, mystical, mm -hmm. un, you know, unnecessarily recognized right. e events and, and experiences. Right. The imagination is what's real. The imagination 
is the seeing the higher dimensions, you know? I think William Blake talked about the imagination being a form of perception, actually. But you're right, it does have to be developed because if you think back, probably in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't know what your gifts were. Maybe mm -hmm. you were very young. Yeah, How old were you? What, do you recall when you first started to recognize? Well, I always had, had vivid dreams. What? No, <laughs> it had to be before Ramsey. Yeah, no, I always had vivid dreams. Oh, I did have out of body experiences when I was young, like, you know, feeling pulled out of my body or floating above my body or different. I, and that was not explainable in any of the books I read. Mm. But then when I heard about out of body experiences, it's like, oh, that probably is what happened to me. You know, because I do think so. What did you ask? <laughs> well, did you have a crystallizing moment, or was there a memory that you that mm. you can remember when you were a child that oh, you, know, I you do, perceived yeah. energy, or you perceived that there was more than just the body? Yeah, I remember. I think I was like two years old, Tell and me. it was running along like like just like being a crazy little child, and I was about to hit this like not a wall, but this like um, wooden structure, and I just like stopped. And it's like, wow, I just stopped for no reason. I felt like it was like a, something bigger just stopped. Stopped you? Yeah, yeah, I felt there was like a connection to something bigger. Wow. And it just like all of a sudden, like, I had a moment of, of observing my own mind, huh. being conscious of being conscious. That's pretty cool at two years at old. At two years old, yeah, I did. I was like, well, I just stopped. Something just happened. I just went into this other reality. Mm. I just was aware of awareness. Mm, yeah, I, re I remember that. You remember that story? Yes. Yes. We and should like, tell it. We should tell it. Really? Um, yeah. Well, you okay. know, just really, really, you were no. at a, you were at an event well, in 1981, all, and yeah, in 1981, you remember? Ramtha came through and and approached you. No, we said from the said, audience. <laughs> well, first of all, I was came from a really psychological background, so everything was like explainable in psychology, except like uh, I found a tape of Ramtha. And there was a woman on the tape. Actually, I was introduced to Ramtha in 1979, but um, someone said, yeah, this woman from Washington is like this 35,000-year-old warrior, uses her body. And I said, no, that's, that was too weird. My friend Bobby Faust, who introduced me, said, I said, no. So it took me two years to decide. Someone left me a tape, and, they, uh, and on the tape, this woman was asking Ramtha a question. And she said to Ramtha, you know, I have this really bad skin, I have this really bad skin condition. I've tried all the doctors, all the medicine, everything. Uh, I don't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And Ramtha says, have you tried loving it? And that just hit me. And then you could see there was like, uh, even on the audio tape, there was like this sense of this stopping this woman in her tracks. And suddenly, it's like everything just shifted mm -hmm. in the whole questioning I and um, I said, wow, maybe this is really about love. Maybe these teachings are really about, and the first book that Rantha came out with was Love Yourself Into Life. Hmm. So it's about love. It's about finding the God within mm -hmm. and, and knowing that you're an essence of love, which is the basis of all teachings. That's the entranceway into new realities. So I went to an audience because I said, oh, well, this is probably, this, is, this seems like it's based on love. And, and so... About 100 people is in 1981 at, the, um, at an auditorium up on 73rd Street, Central Park West. Thomas Sharkey put that together. And, and um, he says to me, what say you, beloved entity? I'm sitting there in the audience. Mm. And I say, me? Are you talking to me? Because <laughs> it was like this amazing presence. This woman this goes into a trance. and Jay-Z Knight. Jay-Z Knight. And this 35,000-year-old warrior, if you believe that, mm -hmm. it totally changes the energy in the body. Mm -hmm. And so he said to me, what say you, beloved entity? How be you this day in your time? It's like Shakespeare, like Shakespearean. It's very dramatic. And, it's, and he says, oh, you be, he says, you are a most contented entity. Mm. And then I still don't realize he's actually talking to me or believe it. But then I tune in, in that moment, I tune in, and we sort of like gaze at each other. And then like the room sort of dissolves. And it's like I'm in an altered state. Mm -hmm. And it's like there was this like energetic awakening or embrace. And then in that moment, I knew I was more than my body. Mm -hmm. It's like the essence. I always suspected it or 
had an idea, but then it was conditioned by the psychological paradigm that says, no, that's not possible. But in the moment of that awakening, mm -hmm. I knew there was more mm -hmm. to me. I knew I was more. I knew the energy and the consciousness that I was was not just contained in the body. The body was the vehicle for that, but there was a greater sense of reality. And so that was the beginning of, of that. And everything nice. I've done since was to sort of confirm that original experience. Huh. Sounds like me. a tremendous paradigm shift for you at that point. Yes, that, moment. that was an awakening. I mean, everyone had, what was your awakening? How did you get into this? I want to thank Alan, and I want to thank my wonderful executive producer, Rick Mack. And I want to thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.